my office once again, but not for long. Tonight is the Hagee Lecture. Dr. Margaret McMillan, an Oxford historian, is coming to talk about World War I and the causes and, and the roots. She's written books like Women of the Raj and Paris 1919. It's going to be really interesting to see her talk about the beginning of the war as well as the end of it. Um, more footage to come because I'm about to go and have dinner with her because this is one of these events that I get to do at my job. People are gathered around waiting for the lecture to start. These people are an hour early. That's how awesome they are. I am here with John Milka, who is the head of the University of Waterloo Hagee, Hagee Lecture Committee. And uh, John, why are the Hagee Lectures important? I think they provide an opportunity for the university to really connect with the broader community. I mean, this is really uh, an occasion, at least once every year, where we can bring in a high-profile speaker, a high-profile academic, someone who can perhaps really make connections with the broader community. So it's not meant to be just for the university environment, but also for the broader community, and really work on that university community partnership. So thank you very much, John. And there are a ton of people here. So, 2013 Hagee Lecture, success. Greater trade between nations does not necessarily make them friendly. Let me just give you one example from, from the, that period. Germany and Britain were each other's greatest trading partners in the period before 1914. And they were linked in many other ways. They shared majority religion in both countries was Protestantism. They shared cultural values. They shared, of course, a royal family. I mean, the British royal family was German. And British kings and queens until the, second, the First World War spoke with German accents, and their first language was often German. So they, they, were, they were links, and there were links down through society, in the middle classes, in the aristocracy, even in the working classes, there were family ties between Britain and Germany. They were made, you would think, to be each other's best friends. And there were good strategic reasons why they should be friends. Germany had the biggest army on the continent of Europe. Big Britain had the biggest navy in the world. Together, they were a very formidable force, and yet, the very links between them also helped to create suspicion, particularly the fears in both countries that the other was out to do them in. Though I'd like to look down at the earth from above, I'd miss all the places and people I love. So although I might like it for one afternoon, I don't want to live on 